Happy Thursday, everyone. Hope you're safe. And today I want to talk about remaining safe whenever dogs get into a fight, either in your house or in your backyard. If you own more than a couple of dogs, there's a high likelihood that at some point they will get into a fight. And if you're going to bring a dog over to your home, whether it's going to be in a, a new addition to your pack or just someone coming over to visit, there is the possibility that they will get into a fight. And I'm here to tell you, dog fighting is serious business. It really is. And if you've been involved in one, you've had dogs fighting, do you know exactly what I'm talking about? And all the years that I've owned dogs personally, and in 40 years of taking care of dogs, training dogs of different levels, I'm here to tell you, I've seen my share of dog fights, and I've been involved in way too many. So over the years, kind of learned a thing or two about how to break up a dog fight successfully without me having to make a trip to the emergency room. Because I'm telling you what, it can certainly send you there while your dogs are sitting there just licking the saliva off of them. You're the one that is headed to the emergency room with a tourniquet on your arm, a tea on your forehead, and a bottle of water. Three times this happened to me. Okay? So I know what I'm talking about here. Don't make the, the same mistakes. Do not do certain things in a dog fight. It can be serious and it can be fatal. So this is real serious right here. It's going to take a little bit of heart to get this thing done. Okay, participating in here today is Red Zone. These are dogs I use to evaluate dogs uh, that are possibly suffering from mental illnesses just like human beings. But today they're going to demonstrate for me what, or I'm going to demonstrate what to do in case there's a fight going on. Okay, you see the first thing I hold into my hand? First of all, it's called a broom. I call it porcupine on a stick. Why do I use a porcupine on a stick? Because the last thing that you should do is ever grab dogs in a dog fight. So let me just run down this list real quick. I got some do's and some don'ts. Uh, some don'ts and some do's, I should say. So let's go over the don'ts. First of all, don't panic. When you have a dog fight, they, they look and sound horrific. They really do. But in most cases, those dogs that are involved in that fight are more capable of withstanding the damage that's being inflicted than you are. They're really good at it. They have muscles around their neck, additional 200 muscles. They have, they're got, they have muscles in different places. They have small windows of opportunity to cause a serious injury. In most cases, it's just puncture wounds, uh, maybe a torn ear, may not look good, torn tail, you name it. But at the end of the day, there's not many fatalities that occur immediately as a result of a dogfight. Some do happen, but not the vast majority. So A, don't panic. Don't panic. Number two, don't yell. Yelling at two dogs in a fight, you're, if anything, you're going to exacerbate the situation. If you're yelling, you're yelling for someone to bring you the proper tools you need to break up the dog fight, or you're yelling for help. That's all you're doing. But yelling's not going to get it done. Your yelling should have been done right before the fight. No, don't go there. Stop it right now. And if that didn't work, then that's over. Next thing, never grab. Uh, yeah, it's so natural. So the first thing we want to do is just reach in there and grab. Let me tell you something. When your dog gets into a fight, in a full-on fight, and this isn't just me driving you away from a bone or driving you away from a bowl of food. This is me attacking you and you attacking back. That means that that whole situation has morphed into self-defense aggression, the most deadly aggression on the planet Earth. Watch out for that. And when that happens and you go flying up your good old column here where you're, you were calm, now you were aroused, now you're going to be all the way up here in this panic reactive land. When you get in that red zone up there, you're not going to hear anyone yelling at you. You won't even feel them grabbing you. And if you do, you won't know who it is. It's like being in a melee. You are fighting one person, and all of a sudden there's several people around you. You don't know if they're there to assist you or hurt you. You're so far up in here, you're not even consciously aware of many of these things occurring. You're on autopilot. This is where people black out. They're fully conscious during the event, but they don't remember the event. 
This is where your brain takes over and says, hey, Brian, don't overthink this situation right now. I'll take over. And everything that you've used in the past to get out of a similar situation, every bit of instinct that you have, every bit of fighting experience that you have, that's going to come into play right here and right now. And you can try and grab and you can try and twist legs and you can get the yanking on ears and tails. But if they're this high up here, there's going to be the possibility of what we call stress-induced analgesia. That's another thing that our good old stress response gave us to survive the outcomes, to, to walk away from this gunfight. You don't feel the pain. You're not feeling it. So you got to do something else. You have to disrupt the fight. So don't panic. Don't yell. Don't grab. So here's what you do instead. And I have used all three, and I have used all three of these techniques multiple times, and I'm 1,000 and no. I'm here to tell you, I'm batting 1,000. Never has it let me down, and never has it let anyone down that I've shown them what to do or told them what to do. Okay, things evolve over the years. As things come out, as household gear comes out, there are things that you can use that are better than a garden hose for breaking up a fight. Everyone wants to go grab the hose. Well, first of all, if you're in your kitchen, where's your hose? Good luck dragging that bad boy into your kitchen. And a lot of dogs, look at me. You start spraying me in the face when I'm in a full-on battle. I think I'm about to be choked to death by somebody. And you spray me in the face with a water hose. That's not going to stop me. No, I'm going to continue to fight for my life. So here's what works with dogs. Okay, there's these new things out there. And they're called... Ugh. Weighted blankets. Weighted. This is a 15-pound blanket. Now, it's a little bit smaller, so I didn't want to drag a huge one in here, but I'd recommend you, depending on the size of your dogs, get either like a queen size or even a king size. But make sure it's not so heavy because you can get these things all the way up to 25 pounds. So it does you no good if you're dragging it across your floor and you can't get it up and over the dogs. Keep a couple of these handy. They're really comfortable, and a lot of people put them on themselves. That's what they're there for, to act a little bit, I hate to say it, but a little bit like a straight jacket. If you can put pressure on your thoracic cavity, any sort of weight on it or any sort of pressure on it, it will make your heart slow down. And when that happens, guess what comes down as well? The good old stress response. So very therapeutic. But I tell you what, in a dog fight, there's nothing better. Your dog's getting in a fight, immediately throw this over the top of them. Right over the top. Instantly, lights out. Kind of hard to fight something if you can't see it. Number two, the weight is extremely suffocating. It doesn't billow out from the wind. That weight immediately comes down and adheres to the face of the animals, and they can't breathe. So you only get to continue fighting as long as you can hold your breath. This works, guys. Throw it right on the dogs and throw it with a little bit of force. That bad boy just sticks right to them right then and there. Then step back a second and be ready to go because here's what did happen to me one time. They both immediately disengaged, popped out, went like, what the heck was that? Saw one another and immediately reengaged again. So I had to be ready with that blanket again. I just pulled it right up and threw it right on top of the dogs again. After the second time, they were done. The fight was over. So a weighted blanket, you can get these things anywhere. Go get you a couple of them, leave them around the kitchen, leave them around the den, anywhere that there's a likelihood that your dogs could get into a fight. Okay, number two, fire extinguisher. I prefer CO2, CO2, it robs the air. The really only hazard using a fire extinguisher uh, the CO2 based is it can suck the air out of a small room. Not likely, you're not going to keep the darn thing going until it's empty. When you use a fire extinguisher, whether it be the dry chemical or CO2, you simply fire it right over the dog's heads. Not into their eyes, not up their nose. Over their heads. Guarantee you, it's going to stop right then. Guarantee. And if it's a dry chemical, like the monoammonia phosphate, no big deal. They suck a little in. You may suck a little in. <clears throat> Pardon me. 
See how? That's good acting, isn't it? And it can actually cause a little bit of an irritation in your upper respiratory system, but nothing that's going to be deadly because you're not going to be sitting there spraying this thing for 30, 30 minutes. It's so a real quick, pull the pen out, boom, Poosh. done, done. You will see the dogs break up, and if you even point in their direction, it's over, over. So again, not in the eyes, not in the ears, not up the nose, right over the head, right over the head, done, guaranteed. Lastly, what I started off with on this video, porcupine on a stick. When we use this, we don't use this end. That end is for you to hang on to. The end you use is the porcupine, the good old bristles. Don't use a nylon broom. Use a good old straw broom. And when you use this, your target areas are the rump first. Good jab there. Then the flank area. Oh, you want to see a sensitive area on a dog? Right there. Just grab that sometime on your dog and you better be quick. Because I'm telling you what, they're going to whip around on you in a second. So that's a real sensitive area. Whew, a good jab right there. That fails right there on those ears. And guys, you can't be nice, but you can't go, oh, stop, 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 stop. No, it is boom. You mean it. You have to disrupt this. And I know some people are probably going to think, oh, isn't that cruel? You're going to hurt your dog. Tell you what, before you make that comment, go own a veterinary hospital for a few decades and see what comes walking in the door. Minus ears, minus eyes, entire jaws, lower jaws ripped off. I can keep this going. This is far less injury causing than what they will do to one another and what they will do to you should you reach in here and try and grab. Because when they come on you, you could end up with both dogs on you, not just one. And I don't care if it's your own dog, you will get bitten by your own dog. This is a whole different world, guys. This is animal kingdom here. This isn't human. There's no attorneys to... to Work this thing out. No counselors, no arbitrators. There's your will and your desire to save your dogs and save yourself. And if that means if you don't have the will to give that a good jab right there behind those ears, right there across that muzzle, right there in that flank or in that rear end, then don't use it. In fact, don't, any, don't own dogs that could get into a fight. Because you will go to the emergency room. And if it's a smaller child who tries to reach in there and mimic what, they, what that child sees his parents do on the previous fight, you could be burying that child. So I'm no playing any games here. Breaking up dog fights is darn serious. And you better be in a serious frame of mind if you think you're going to get this thing done with the minimal amount of injuries sustained by your dogs and by you and your loved ones. Okay, a couple things to do other than that. Always be prepared. Have it in your mind. Have it in your mind. My dogs could always get into a fight. There's always competitive aggression. Just leave one valuable object lying around, one valuable food source, and it's game on. So always be prepared. Anyone brings a dog over, I don't care how much they tell you, oh, my dog loves dogs. I told you about that yesterday. Poor habitat, rich habitat. Always be prepared. Have your straw booms. Have your CO2 fire extinguishers. Have your weighted blankets around the house. You can tuck them away, but that means you have to practice. Yeah, practice as a family. Okay, here we go. Ready? One, two, three, start. See how fast you can locate that fire extinguisher. Locate that weighted blanket. Locate that broom. And then bring it back to a spot and practice its actual use. Doing what you're supposed to do. So that if you start to go up here, that practice will be parked in procedural memory land. Habit forming. Instinct. 
So it'll come out right then. No thought given, game over, this thing's done. And then one last thing to kind of comfort you with. Remember I said a long time ago, winners continue to win, losers continue to lose. That's the canine mentality. If I lose, I typically don't do what caused me to lose in the past ever again in the future. You break up a couple of dog fights around your house successfully, at least while you're there, just a look from you, don't even go there. And it's over. It's over. They get it. And then over a period of time, a little bit more grace builds in, a little bit more tolerance builds in. Finally, all of a sudden, whatever it is I got with you to fight over, I don't really care anymore. A little age sets in, and you can get this thing done. Okay, show this to your family, forward it, share it with someone that you think could definitely use this because we all can. I anyone that owns multiple dogs, or if you're ever going to bring another dog in your household, you can use this information. It does work. I've done it, and hundreds of people I've advised have done it, and all of us are batting a thousand. Every single dog fight ended right then. You do the same. I don't want to read about you sending me pictures of big old scars on your arm. I had to cover mine up with a tattoo. Kind of like my tattoo, but they're covering up scars. And you can see others on me. Got, got a ton of them on me. I don't want that to happen to you. Okay? Do what I tell you to do. You'll get it done. And we're all going to move on down the road and start talking about some fun things when it comes to dogs, not having to break up a dog fight. Okay, guys, I'll see you tomorrow for the rest of the day. Be safe. Be prepared. Practice. And you're going to be good to go. See you tomorrow.